Dr. Paul here. We have an opportunity to take a look at a young man who comes in with sore throat, but I've been in ahead and noticed that there's some very interesting lymph nodes. Let's go take a look. Hi, how you doing? You're having a sore throat, right? Uh-huh. And it's been hurting for how long? About three or two days. You were saying, I think last night was hard? Yeah, last night. It was really bad because of your throat? Yeah. Okay. I, I got up three times for some water. Okay, because your throat was hurting? Yeah. Okay. Kind of helped. Did it? I think you had a little bit of fever? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of fever. And then other than that, the only other thing that was interesting and like you can kind of see, it's a little swollen right there, isn't it? And why don't you look out the window and uh, we can kind of see here, we got a big swelling, don't we? All right, so this here, go ahead and look out the window again. That was excellent, actually. This here is the muscle called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It, it attaches right here to the sternum, and then it goes up to the mastoid. And this here swelling is just in front, and slightly overlapping that muscle. So that's kind of interesting. And then when I feel your jaw, this is your chin. The, you knew that. <laughs> That's silly. So this is your chin, and then if we follow your chin, this is called your mandible. And right here, I can feel the angle of your mandible. So, so your jaw right here, it goes from your chin, and it goes all so my along. Angle of my mandible and then it turns a corner right there. It's kind of like a little... Yeah, bump. yeah. It, it go, your mouth is like... The, it's it like, like that. It's yeah. like a triangle. Exactly. If your mouth is open. Perfect example. So if I can feel that angle of that triangle there, which I can, that means you don't have mumps. Isn't that great? Huh. Yeah. So, um, folks, this is a very important point. When you have swellings like our friend here has right here, that swelling, you usually are going to automatically think, oh, that's mumps. But it's not, because here's the angle of his jaw. Nice and defined, that triangle like he pointed out. And this is behind that or below it if you want. And so this is a lymph node. This is a very large lymph node, isn't it? Now, tell me something. When I push on those, does that hurt? Not really. No? Kind of aches a little bit. It does ache a little, yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that it doesn't hurt more than it does. Usually when a node gets that inflamed, and this happened fairly quickly over just a couple days, um, that usually hurts quite a bit. That right there, folks, is what we would call, when you have large lymph nodes, the medical term is lymphadenopathy. But when you have infected lymph nodes, that's lymphadenitis. Itis, inflammation, lymph node, lymphadenitis. Now the interesting thing is, you came in for a sore throat. I better look at your throat. So, we have our handy dandy oh, otoscope. This is basically, we're just using it for a flashlight and say a big ah. Ah, ah, ah. very good. Go. One more time, ah, 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 good job. So what we're seeing here is the roof of his mouth is tiny little bumpy, a little tiny bit pink. And those tonsils, which sit on either side of the back of the throat, are a little bit enlarged and slightly pink. Not, not huge, not dramatic. What was really impressive were your lymph nodes. We've already run a strep test, but you remember I took the swab yeah. and it came back positive. So this is an interesting case of a strep throat that also now also has infected lymph nodes. So we're going to give you an antibiotic and you'll start feeling better. <laughs> you like that idea. <laughs> okay. So, do you know if you have any allergies? Um, Besides girls. What? <laughs> so, I, I did chat with mom, and he's allergic to penicillin, which is our usual first choice for strep throat. In this case, we know we have strep, but we can't use penicillin, so we're going to go to our, an alternative. Uh, if you look at the books, it might say erythromycin. That is really rough on the stomach. A lot of people will go with azithromycin because it's just a lot easier. It's a once a day for five days. There are some areas of the world where you have some resistance to azithromycin. Uh, we've had pretty good luck in this part of the world, so we're going to give that a whirl. 
Uh, but if we have to, we may go with a different treatment for this, especially because we have lymph nodes involved. So the choice of antibiotics is a more complicated issue, not really the, the main topic of this video. I just wanted to touch on it. Folks, if you're a physician out there, always, of course, check to see if a person is penicillin allergic. You don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for sharing your very interesting lymph nodes and your throat. Thank you. And we're going to get you feeling better soon. Thanks for watching, folks. I'm Dr. Paul.